Okay, we're just waiting for the graphic to finish so I can speak. Okay, that's good. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, very professional. <laughs> very professional, yes. Not to mention the shorts. The shorts, yeah, yeah, okay, exactly, good. exactly. Well, look, uh, children, <laughs> I didn't get that memo. Over the hills and far away. <laughs> Mello is the man. Who knows what he's been missing? Yes. Absolutely. Chuck Viscanian, <laughs> Rockman, you yes. already know that. And any music aficionados will know from what I just said that Rockman tomorrow night is. Led Zeppelin, Houses of the Holy. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. The fifth <laughs> album, it is absolutely incredible. It is. Um, you know, anybody who followed Led Zeppelin or grew up during Led yeah. Zeppelin, which I think we are privileged to have <laughs> absolutely. done, right? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, realize when Led Zeppelin IV came out, you were after, after that album, people were like, what could you do? You can't do anything to top Led Zeppelin yeah. IV. And yeah. this is, of course, after Led Zeppelin I, two, two, and three. three. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. So uh, here it goes, the fifth album, Houses of the Holy, and a nice turn in the road. Yeah, I mean, they... they well, as, as you alluded to, you know, they could have made Led Zeppelin IV version two. Yeah. They didn't. They, they, um, they, when they had gotten to Led Zeppelin IV, they really started working together more collaboratively on the songs. Mm -hmm. A lot of the songs on Houses of the Holy are co-written by the band. Right. Everything has always been a, sort of arranged by the band. Uh, Plant writing the melodies and the lyrics, uh, Paige doing all the guitar work, and then the band doing the arrangements in the studios. But, um, the with House of the Holy, man, they started really relying on John Paul Jones. Oh, let's and, start. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Oh. There's a you can YouTube this. Uh, Zeppelin got together in 2007. Yes, and performed, and it's just them on stage. You ever really want to respect the hidden talent and the man who sort of well, how do you? Steal the thunder yeah. from Bonham, <laughs> Page, and Plant. Plant okay, right, exactly. However, John Paul Jones was such an absolutely incredible musician's musician. Keyboards, organ, foot pedals, bass, guitar. You mandolin. Named, oh, mandolin. Right. Yeah, he had that three neck. That's right. The guitar, mandolin, bass thing going on. You know, he, crazy, crazy. And you're player. right. His influence on Houses of the Holy is really felt. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, he just the keyboard work. You know, he does he does uh, things where he's just playing in the all this um, uh, very mellow, very slow music, and then all of a sudden there's this piano, clean piano solo in mm -hmm. the middle, and he just lifts everything. And one of the things that Page wanted out of Led Zeppelin, what he wanted coming out of the Yardbirds, was a band that could play with shadows and light. He yes, wanted right. something that had depth. Mm -hmm. And um, I think John Paul Jones really, I think th this album, more than any other album of theirs, realized that vision. Well, you know what? We were talking about a time when production was really just a means to an end. Mm. It wasn't, the album wasn't created because of production. The album was created because of the musicianship. Yeah. Production was a vehicle to get the thing laid down there again. But you and I have talked about this before. When Page would go off and scream to high heavens, John Paul Jones would go low. Yeah. He just provide this unbelievable, unbelievable. cushion yes. for him to sit on. And some songs, there's, there's three bass parts doing something that you never do in recording. They, right. they EQ it up a little bit so you hear the bass part and they stick it in the left speaker. Mm -hmm. And then they stick it in the right speaker. And then they stick it dead center. And what they're sticking dead center, they use a synthesizer to get to because they couldn't, the bass guitar they wouldn't get that note. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure, so, sure. I mean, just it's just the stuff that they did was groundbreaking in its um, sort of innocence, you know, mm -hmm. that's part of that's part of making music back in these days. They they had these tools. They didn't mm -hmm. really know how to use them, but they wanted something new and fresh, that's and right. that's what they were able to create. That's one of the reasons they didn't go on after Bonham had mm -hmm. died. Is that they really felt oh, that they had done everything they could do. They are absolutely right. Uh, the correct pronunciation for Dire Maker. Jamaica <laughs> is Jamaica. <laughs> What's the background? The uh, it's a it's from a British joke. Yes, right. That's yeah, true. it's yeah, from yeah, a British yeah, yeah. joke. But I'm everybody not, says dire maker, right? Yeah, everybody yeah. says dire maker. I said dire maker a lot too, but it's Jamaica. Um, also on houses the holy and uh, Chuck, of course, gets into this in great detail in this magnificent storytelling way that you do. <laughs> I'm telling you, you mesmerize the audience. You always do. Um, Ocean. 
Ocean. Right. I say in the, I say in the presentation, Ocean's the last song on the album. And I say in the mm -hmm. presentation that if I had opened the album and it was blank except for this one song, <laughs> I right. would have been satisfied. <laughs> I know. Well, you know what? Chuck and I talk so much about music and there's something very special about the music that he does at Rachman. It's really the religion of the times. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. goes way beyond a hit single or any of this kind of stuff. You go so interestingly in depth in your storytelling. Um, look, Cafe Lena, tomorrow night, the 17th, only a few seats left. Yeah. Do you believe we're at a point now where these things sell I'm, out I'm every so time? I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Well, I you mean, earned you it. You know, I, I, it's not, it's not, so much about it selling out as like being a cool thing. It's that the room, the energy in the room, it, mm -hmm. everybody's there to enjoy what we're going to listen to together. You know what I, I mean? Know. Oh, and it's just, it's just, it's just the intensity of that is just so great. Now, so great. Now it's very, very important you understand that if you're going to do Led Zeppelin, that you keep the volume button. <laughs> Knob up, very very close to you. <laughs> no offense, Joe. Joe but yeah. you got. As I say, Joe Duell's been at Cafe Lena since the '50s, even though they didn't open until the since okay. until the '60s. Sure. But uh, he does a great job for me. He does the sound there. He does a great job for everybody. Sure, of course there. he does. But um, uh, yeah, he does, he does like to keep that. You know, he's, he likes the folk and acoustic stuff. So yeah, I know. When we get into a little. Uh, Just keep that volume of close over the hills to and far away. He gets yeah, a little bit. Nice. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> oh, I can't wait till tomorrow night. Uh, the next one in August? Uh, Bruce Springsteen on August 21st. Born yes. to Run? Born to Run. Oh, Absolutely. My God. Well, you Absolutely. talk about religion Tramps of the like times. <laughs> religion of the times, oh, yeah. right? Okay, oh, yeah. Chuck. All right, so I'll see you tomorrow night. Absolutely. Great to see you, pal. Very good to see you. Thank okay. you so much, Jesse. And to see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com. Da 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 da. I don't get it. Da, da. <laughs>